So we will start working with this interesting problem from number theory. We have this expression 1 plus x plus x square up to x raised to n minus 1 and it's given that this number 1 plus x plus x square up to x raised to n minus 1 it's given that it's a prime number suppose it's p we want to show that n is also prime this particular problem actually depends on a very simple factorization let me do it in red suppose if you have a to the power n minus 1 then you can always factorize it into a minus 1 times a raised to n minus 1 plus a raised to n minus 2 up to a raised to 2 a and 1. Now why is this true? This is true because if you multiply it out you will see that if you multiply it out with a you will see that you get a to the power n a to the power n minus 1 up to a cube a square a and then when you start multiplying with negative 1, you get at the power negative at the power n minus 1, negative a cube, negative a square, negative a, negative 1. So if you add this out, of course everything in the middle cancels off, and what you are left out with is what you started off with at the power n minus 1. So this is a very standard factorization, and we will be using it over and over again for the purpose of this problem. So let's now rewrite this expression in a particular way using this this factorization. So we know that x to the power n minus 1 by x minus 1 is this 1 plus x plus x square up to x to the power n minus 1 which is the prime p that's what's given see if you bring this a to the power a, a minus 1 downstairs you'll get exactly what i have got here now this means that x to the power n minus 1 is equals to the prime times x minus 1 now we want to show that n is a prime number now suppose it is not if if n is not a prime number if n is not a prime then we should be able to factorize it as some m1 times m2 where m1 is not equals to 1 and m2 is not equals to 1 right? it should be factorizable into two numbers if it is not prime that is the meaning of being a prime number so let's write it out like that so we have x raised to m1 times m2 minus 1 this is equals to p times x minus 1 now the trick is to write this x to the power m m1 raised to the power m2 minus 1 this one has this times p is it's equal to p times x minus 1 now you see we can again apply this factorization in this case of course my a would be x to the power m1 so if we apply that we will have x raised to m1 minus 1 times x raised to m1 raised to m2 minus 1 plus x raised to m1 raised to m2 minus 2 up to 1 this is equals to p times x minus 1 now clearly this quantity is some number greater than 1 why because it's given that 
k is positive k is a positive integer so if you add some power of a positive integer to 1 you will get something greater than 1 so suppose this number is k now what is x to the power m minus 1 it can be further factorized into x minus 1 x to the power m1 minus 1 x to the power m1 minus 2 up to 1 times k this is equal to p times x minus 1 now we can cancel off this x minus 1 x minus 1 so we have x to the power m1 minus 1 x to the power m1 minus 2 up to 1 times k equals to p but how is that possible i mean k is greater k is greater than 1 as we saw here and this thing is obviously greater than 1 because m1 is greater than 1 that's that that's the part what we assumed here since n was not a prime we could factorize into m1 and m2 none of which were 1 so clearly m is greater than 1 and k is greater than 1 so we, we have factorized p into two numbers both of which are greater than 1 but that is a contradiction why because p is a prime so a prime cannot be factored into two numbers both of which are greater than 1 so we see a, a contradiction here which is a very straightforward contradiction there is a little glitch in our entire argument though I mean we started off with this expression but what if x is equal to 1 because if x is equal to 1 then obviously this particular construction will not work right but then if x is equal to 1 so let's take make it a case 2 if x is equal to 1 then 1 plus x plus up to x to the power n minus 1 this is given to be p now since x is 1 each of them is 1 and there are n of them we started with x, to x raised to 0 so if we add n of them we get n on this side so n is equal to p since p is a prime n will be a prime so basically we did it in two cases we first had the case so case I should write here case 1 where x is not equals to 1 and case 2 where x is equals to 1 so since both of these cases uh, are done we are we can say that if p is prime then clearly so is n